I'm a bird, mother I'm a bird. Dragon Age Veilguard Defenders just went ballistic. There's a lot of um, arguing happening on Twitter. That's one of the reasons why I personally do not want to partake in the Twitter culture too much. Even if I do post, I do not participate in the current quote-unquote trending stuff. Just the other day, we were talking about Dragon Age The Veil Guard and how their review embargo lifted, causing the discourse around that game to proliferate. And already since then, two other major things have occurred that have caused the biggest shills for this game to absolutely lose their minds. One being the situation with YouTuber Mr. Matty Plays, and the other being the situation with news publication Dual Shockers. The Dual Shockers situation is going to be much more brief to go over, so let's start with that one. On October 28th, they posted their official Dragon Age The Veil Guard review, and one particular line that they wrote in their review has caused a number of gaming journalists to get very upset on social media. Specifically, that being this area, where they say, it's a game that clearly has had a bit of the Sweet Baby Ink treatment in spots when it comes to its character backgrounds and storytelling. And it's a game that is willing to offer fan service by giving old characters little cameo appearances, but unwilling to truly cater to the wants and needs of long-serving Dragon Age fans. The Sweet Baby Ink thing is what's really setting these people off. Now, to be fair, the wording there could be a bit better, because it might confuse some people into thinking that SPI had anything to do with Veilguard, which I don't believe it did. However, I think it's reasonable to conclude that the author is simply referencing similarities with Veilguard and SBI affiliated games. In regards to how some things are written, like some of the characters, the story... I like that he's um, specifically underlining for people who might not know the difference between Sweet Baby Inc. and Consultancy Agencies. I, I do think the person who wrote the article should have mentioned Consultancy Agencies. Yes. Not specifically Sweet Baby Inc etc. For example, paraphrasing that part of Skillop's review, where he mentioned that it felt like Veilguard was written with HR constantly in the room. Now here's the really funny thing though. The issue that the journalists that we're about to take a look at have with that part of the review isn't what I mentioned. They're actually mad at Sweet Baby Inc. simply even being referenced. For example, this corpo journalist over at Polygon, etc. had this to say. Me, when my brain is sludge and I cannot form a cohesive critique without being a dirtbag. And going on to post that part of the review that mentions Sweet Baby Inc. I noticed the journalist attempting why did they always uh, like jump down to insulting people rather than having an actual conversation? If this person would have called out this article without insulting and simply said, we have nothing to do with Sweet Baby Inc. We have our own group that consults us on it. That would have so much more merit to it hide a response, so I went to take a look at it. This person pointing out how Kotaku has done similar things in their own way. And once again, the journalist's response to this was simply to try and hide the tweet. We can see another self-proclaimed journalist right here also getting upset at Dual Shocker's reference of Sweet Baby Inc. A response would read, what the heck is this even about anymore? And someone else says, sexism and bigotry. Same thing it's been since the beginning. As always, these people come off- Okay, so I guess I'm sexist and bigoted. Because I think Dragon Age Railguard looks like shit. It sounds like shit. And the content they put inside of the game makes absolute no sense to that specific franchise. And on top of that, they put out blank are saying that this game is specifically for that demographic. Extremely fake. There's been verifiable evidence of racism and bigotry from Sweet Baby Inc. But go figure that these people will ignore that to defend the corpos. By the way, the person on top claims to be a CEO of a media consultation company. Journalist Jason Schreier would also comment on this, saying... This from a review on Metacritic is truly unhinged, not just because of the dog whistling, but because of the divine power that idiots keep ascribing to consultants. Hate to break it to you folks, but the people making key decisions at game companies aren't on contract. It comes off like he's really trying to deflect any of the issues that consultation companies bring to games. I've mentioned in many of my videos that I think it's unwise to put all the blame on consultation firms like SBI, because ultimately these corporations are the ones willingly hiring them to begin with, and of course they also make plenty of terrible decisions on their own. It's also a really bad move to ignore the issues that these consultation firms also bring, and yet it seems like Jason Schreier really doesn't want to acknowledge that. I also find it hilarious how he's attempting to say that simply referencing Sweet Baby Inc. is a dog whistle, as if people aren't even allowed to say Sweet Baby Inc.'s name. On occasion, Schreier has actually done pretty good investigative work in the gaming space, so it's too bad due to suffering from such political brain rot. Over here, we have a senior reporter at Kotaku, and he also posts that part of DualShocker's review that mentions Sweet Baby Inc., saying that it's utterly disqualifying. And the I also think it's the case of not actually doing research. I think... I don't know what happened to the guy, but originally, when I personally just started looking into the whole culture thing, in the gaming industry for the past like let's say year 
at the beginning on the very surface level especially considering what kind of social media posts were being pushed on my timeline it did look like people are being quote unquote bigots and sexist mm. but when you apply just i don't know 10 minutes of looking into it or reading up on it you can see what kind of a changes they're doing Every time I check out what they have to say, it doesn't factually track. I'm heavily against changing lores. I'm heavily against pandering to a specific thing in a fictional world. The kind of stuff they're saying, they're always the ones insulting people. They're always the ones actually harassing people, even though they blame everyone else uh, about harassing them. And I'm... Sp- specifically talking about people like otaku and sweet baby ink i would recommend like if you have time go check out the kind of stuff they actually do post they are trying to heavily twist it so much that there are people who believe them it's actually shocking to have a major publication feed into right-wing talking points i find it crazy how many social media activists say that critiquing companies is now a right-wing thing to do A response to that person would say, imagine thinking those are right-wing talking points, not people simply ticked off at the amount of slop and saying enough. Just look at all these AAA failures and mass layoffs over the last two years. The response from that individual was to block that person. That reminds me of the journalist we talked Mm. about earlier, whose response to another tweet was to simply hide it. Here we have a self-proclaimed media games critic and sensitivity consultant. Once again, also posting this. What's a sensitivity consultant? Are they just making up words? I think so. They're making up jobs. It has to be making up jobs. Can I be a toll consultant at Sony? <laughs> my my only job is to consult how to shape the toe, the big toe, just the big toe of the character. Sweet Baby Ink mentioned in DualShockers review, and as you can see, getting pretty upset by it, saying they want to knock it all over. Wow, real tough guy here. This person claims to be a singer-songwriter featured in Ubisoft games, and they removed the part of the article mentioning Sweet Baby Ink saying that they fixed it. A self-proclaimed PR marketing person would also comment on this, saying, man, what are we doing? I would really love it if I could assume most of the people I run into at professional industry social events are at the baseline good people, please. As you can see, many of these industry corpos think that simply referencing Sweet Baby Inc. makes you a terrible person. These sort of people would love to be able to control a specific narrative, and they freak out when that narrative is shattered. A different writer for Dual Shockers would defend the article, saying, The entire drama doesn't sit right with me. I'm a queer writer for Dual Shockers. My experience working with Callum across different websites for nearly two years now has been nothing short of excellent, and anyone calling him a quote-unquote anti-woke grifter knows nothing about him. Unfortunately, Dual Shockers would eventually capitulate to these angry people in the industry and make an edit removing the mention of Sweet Baby Inc. from their article. So let me know what you think about all that stuff in the comments, and now moving on to the section where we talk about what happened to Mr. Matty Plays. As you may know, he had put out a review that isn't exactly positive of the game, titling it Dragon Age The Veil Guard is a big disappointment. That in of itself has already upset a number of the biggest shills for this game. However, things also got a lot more common. Wait, so I'm trying to understand. Why exactly are they upset? Are they upset that someone didn't like the game they like? Are are we reaching the point where people cannot have opinions on what they like and what they don't like? complicated. So the first thing, do you remember how some of the game footage got leaked shortly before the review embargo was lifted? For example, this being one of those clips. Fruit before it spoils. I like the cookies better. Everyone likes the cookies better. I'll eat the fruit. So the dragon hunter has a softer side. The Kuhn says you take care of people. So you're a little Kunari, a little Rivani, and a little dragon? Yeah. Well, I get that. Come on. I should tell my mother how Karash is doing. Well, Twitter people would go on to take a look at the rook being used in those leaks, rook being the player character, and okay. compare it to the rook that was used in Mr. Matty Play's review, going on to accuse him of breaking NDA and leaking the game. More specifically, they would accuse him of leaking that footage to someone else. Okay, I do have to kind of say that conversation does not feel natural. It really doesn't who then posted it to Twitter 
and also went on to make a number of racist comments. For example, this tweet saying, by the way, Mr. Matty Plays broke the Dragon Age NDA and leaked gameplay footage to a friend who happens to have a very racist Twitter account. So yeah, good luck with this one. Another tweet, this one with over 2,600 likes would read, Hey cutie, this you from the leaked footage being spread by you or one of your friends, quote unquote. Shame other companies saw who they trusted their content either. Couldn't give it 24 hours to just post a critical review? You bad to show your phobe friend? Or was it you directly? While half that post is incoherent nonsense, we get the point. They're upset. Another post, okay. this one with over 2200 likes, saying, Mr. Matty plays insulting the game while also leaking the game to his Nazi friend. Adding, look at them side by side and tell me it's not his rook. This tweet got over 8,500 likes, and it reads, It's being claimed that a prominent reviewer not only leaked NDA footage under an alias, he then posted a video review of the game featuring an identical custom character. The real insider is back, ladies and gentlemen. So they basically accuse him of not just leaking it to a friend, but instead leaking it himself on an alt. The same person later adding, Oh, it's so over, and reposting one of the tweets that we already just read. Here's another example with 6,200 plus likes reading, I'm not going to respect the opinion of someone who broke their NDA and gave their phobic friend, quote unquote, game footage to spread around in people's Twitter replies unsolicited. Uh. Screw all the way off with that nonsense. Going on to add. Okay, him breaking the NDA has nothing to do with the fact that the game is bad. While I do agree, breaking NDAs is never good. Yeah, I agree. Uh, unless it's harming you, which automatically knows the NDA anyways. Mm -hmm. I, I do think breaking an nda when you're reviewing a game is not a good thing i don't know if he did i don't know if he didn't but the point remains the game is bad Add honestly i'm side-eyeing anyone who takes the review seriously knowing what he did can we be serious this dude clearly has some weird vendetta against the veil guard so okay him breaking an nda doesn't oh my god just because he broke the nda doesn't mean you shouldn't validate the, the review Soon enough, Maddie would address the situation himself in a tweet getting over 9,900 likes. He says, I think it goes without saying, but today has been an extremely hard day. I really appreciate your patience as I looked into things. First off, I would like to apologize to everyone at Bioware and EA. I have already reached out to them to let them know the truth. We already have plans to sit down and have a conversation about it. That is my gameplay. It was never my intention for clips of Dragon Age to get released ahead of the embargo lifting. I had shared these two clips of the game with an editor of mine. It's my understanding that these clips were then taken, shared again, and went down the chain to someone far removed from both of us, who then posted them claiming to be associated with me. So yes, the clips are mine. If Bioware EA or any other game company chooses not to work with me over this, then I fully understand and accept that. If you, the viewers of my content, choose not to trust me because you deem me irresponsible with the privilege I was given as a game reviewer, I also fully understand and accept that. With that said, it's extremely important for me to firmly shut down one element of this narrative going around about me. Whoever shared these clips on X with the attached hateful comments and replies is not me. I have no clue who runs that account. They are most definitely not my friend, and they stand against everything I believe in. I am only speculating, but I think whoever took my game footage and tweeted it as if they were connected with me was quite deliberate, as it's an easy way to paint me in a bad light. Beyond any guesses I may have, I would never leak my own footage on an alt, and then use that exact same footage in my review. Said account no longer exists, and it is my understanding that it's because it was reported multiple times following the public ridicule it rightfully received. There's no room for that type of hate. It also needs to be said that I have not deleted any comments on my review. I believe as a consumer of media, you have a right to call someone out on BS or say what you feel. I do have preset words for my channel filter that fall under racist, homophobic, etc. terms that automatically get caught by YouTube's moderation system, but that's it. I know I can't convince each and every one of you, but I do think you all deserve an explanation. At the end of the day, my circle of trust was breached, and it was my fault for sending a clip in the first place. As a quick side note for additional context, the reason why he referenced- Fair enough. Yeah. It's not like he's hiding. It's not like he's pulling out a ukulele and trying to make up excuses there. Just owning mm -hmm. up to it without blocking or censoring people his YouTube comments is because a flood of comments came from Twitter accusing him of breaking the NDA during the entire situation. Continuing, he says, I'm deeply disheartened by the amount of people who believe that this Twitter account was me. I don't expect blind loyalty, yet it hurts to see just how quickly I was thrown under the bus. The sad reality of it all is the damage is done, and many people have made up their minds about me today. Since I have started covering this game, many angry opinions have fallen in my lap. When I played the preview, I thoroughly enjoyed it and had a chance to interview the game's director, Corinne Bush. 
In that video, people were sending hate my way because they wanted their opinions heard. Now I have put out my honest and objective review, and people are still unhappy with my personal opinion. It has always been my goal to deliver fair, honest coverage of video games and elevate the conversation, not fan the flames. I'm deeply sad that my clips have played into the detraction of a game that, as stated in my review, others may enjoy more than me. Looking at the open critic score, I'm glad to see it is that way. It's been a tough cycle for the folks at Bioware, and to know I played a part in the pain of the developer who made my favorite games ever is a regret that I don't think I will ever live down, even if people choose to forgive me. Do you think he deserves all the hate? I... I I don't think he deserves all this hate. One thing is criticizing someone for their action. Another thing is blatantly attacking someone for their action. I want to thank my wife, my best friends, and my LSM family who hung with me and didn't lose faith in me. The statements made about my character today have broken my heart into a million pieces. I don't say that so you feel bad for me. I just feel it's important to give my love to those who willingly stood by me in the face of all this. I know it wasn't easy having your ethics in question just by being in my vicinity. Lastly, I'm not going anywhere. I will continue to make content about games across Mr. Matty Plays, Retro Rebound, and Defining Duke. I will also continue to pretend I know what I'm talking about when it comes to movies on Retro Rewind. Hopefully I'll see you there. If not, thanks for taking the time to read this, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Stay sexy, stay active, Matty. As mentioned, his tweet here ended up getting just around 10,000 likes, and we can see that a lot of the responses are supportive of his explanation. However, what Maddie said about many people throwing him under the bus is also true. And many of the people who did such haven't deleted their tweets after his explanation. Some of them have even doubled down. It really looks like parts of the mob. To me, it's coming off uh, someone is basically using the situation to either talk badly about the Dragon Age fans or People are using this to talk bad about the anti-Dragon Age fans. Yeah. So he's genuinely is just being used like a puppet. It's it's the same thing that happened with Black Myth Wukong. Like Black Myth Wukong ended up in the middle. The woke and the anti-woke both using them for their for their own gain. Like to fight each other want him to be guilty, perhaps as some sort of payback, for his negative review of Veilguard. Even on the Dragon Age subreddit, we can see top comments like this. Better report them to EA slash Bioware. According to Gil or Kala, I don't remember now, they're under NDA to not post spoilers about the game. Even during the review time, they're forbidden to show some spoilery things. I say let EA deal with this jerk. This whole friend is likely just an excuse to leak things from his review copy. I really gotta wonder if his review was positive, if they'd be saying the same things. Back on Twitter, other people would respond to Maddie. No, so if it would have been positive, they wouldn't have been saying the same thing at all. Still upset, saying things like, Personally, I'm not buying it. Those leaked images came out a while ago. He had to know that was his rook, and he didn't say anything until it was exposed. And all you have to do is look at the comment section of that review to disprove the not feeding the drama about this game. Another saying, Good on you for acknowledging fault in breaking the NDA. But that's not gonna cut it. We need an actual apology for the toxicity that's growing in your channel and space as a result of your editor, and a response about how that will be handled going forward. Name shame that editor. This one simply saying, you should never get review code again. And one more example we'll take a look at reads, people fawning in the comments and quotes, even though he neither says what will happen with the editor allegedly responsible for the leak, nor addresses the toxicity he's let grow in his community. Okay, buddy. There are many other responses that he's getting just like those. And when you take a look at those accounts, they come off like those sort of social- this specific person wants him to address the toxicity growing within his community. So is he expecting him to just put the blame on his community and throw his community under the bus? No, he's going to safeguard his community for sure. And then, he, and then like one of them say like name slash shame the editor. No, you don't do that. Social media activist types. I find it very amusing how many of them pretend to be pro-labor, yet they're also the quickest people to cry to corporations and try to get those corporations to take actions against individual laborers. Yep. Anyways, that's the situation. Let me know what you think about all of that in the comments. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed my coverage, and if you did, please consider liking and or subscribing to the channel. Appreciate it. I'm seeing this more and more often, like, someone will do something, and the first thing people do is attack them, and tag companies in the thread of discussions to remove them. Mm -hmm.